Mr. Waknin, uh, two weeks after the start of the conflict between Israel and uh, Hamas, Israel attacked Syria. Uh, in your opinion, uh, is this expected or unexpected expected step? From the very beginning, Israel um, has been wanting to expand the conflict, not to limit it, but to expand it. It reacted completely disproportionately to the provocations of Hezbollah in Lebanon. It uh, attacked Syria unprovoked multiple times. Last time yesterday, but the airports in, Hal in, uh, in Aleppo and in, uh, in Damascus have been attacked at least twice that we know of. It, is, um, it has entered the West Bank and arrested hundreds of people and provoked riots and so on and so forth in the West Bank when the West Bank has been relatively peaceful. So Israel, I think, sees the Hamas attack as an opportunity to get rid of all its enemies all around. The enemies that are closely aligned with and allied with Iran. Hezbollah is a Shia militia which is financed and armed by Iran. Hamas is a Sunni militia which is armed by Iran. There are militias, Iranian militias, on the border of, of, with Israel in Syria. And there's a heavy Iranian influence within the West Bank. This is Israel's opportunity, so they think, to get rid of all the influence of Iran in the region. So Israel wants to expand the conflict. Now the United States is terrified of this. That's why Biden came to Israel. That's why Blinken came to Israel. Because the United States is trying to push Israel to limit the conflict, to, to, to not even invade Gaza, to just call it a day. Or maybe if Israel invades Gaza, to invade it for two, three days, five days, to declare victory and to go out. The United States knows that if Israel should attack Iranian influence centers around the region, Iran would be, would be compelled to intervene. And if Iran intervenes, it will not end in that area. For example, already Yemen, Yemenite Houthis, which are aligned with Iran, they already try to bombard Israel with missiles. That is Yemen. Yemen is on the border with Saudi Arabia, so it will drag Saudi Arabia into the picture. The whole region can go up in flames. According to this, can we fear a future escalation of the conflict? I believe that there is a big conflict within the Israeli government, the Israeli public, and most importantly, the Israeli military. There is a big conflict. Some, parts, some part wants to limit the conflict. Maybe a short invasion of the north part of Gaza, maybe some declaration of victory after killing some Hamas leaders, and that's it. And there's another group, the far right, the extremists, the settlers, and the ultra-religious people who do not serve in the army. And these people want to expand the conflict and to make it into a modern biblical Armageddon. They think this is a messianic time, an opportunity for Israel to finally annex all the territories, to become a greater Israel, and destroy all its enemies all around. But Israel is making a catastrophic mistake should it expand the war. Because the Israeli army is not prepared for war. It is a paper tiger. It's a weak army. It's very similar to the Russian army. The Russian army was terrifying everyone until the true face of the Russian army was discovered in Ukraine. It's a nothing army. <laughs> Same with Israel. There have been, there's been budget cuts in the, next ten year, in the last 10 years. The soldiers are not trained. The vast majority of soldiers are not trained. They don't even know how to shoot weapons. There is a deterioration in the quality of the, of the soldiers. And I think if Israel faces two fronts, let alone five, I don't think Israel will, will succeed. It will be defeated. Even now, Israel is a ghetto because the southern part has been evacuated. The northern part has been evacuated. And all the Israelis are concentrated in the center. Now, for you to understand, Israel is tiny, absolutely tiny. It is the size of New Jersey in the United States. Gaza is 60 kilometers on two, three kilometers. So it's a tiny area, maybe from Skopje to Katlanovo. It's a very small area. And uh, there is no place to go. So if a war will start, it will be a total war. And of course, civilians will die all over the place. But Israel will not survive this war.
they are making a catastrophic, arrogant, delusional mistake. They are living in fantasy, in my view. But America openly stood behind Israel. How uh, real is this support? It is real. Israel wants to drag America into the war. This could become the second Vietnam, when the United States already sent 2,000 Marines, advisors, military advisors, two destroyers, uh, munitions, precision munitions, and so on and so forth. It looked exactly like the start of the Vietnam War, exactly how the Vietnam War started. Israel would be delighted, of course, to get the United States involved in the war, because if the United States is involved in the war, actively fighting, like they did in Iraq, or, then, of course, the risk to Israel is minimized. And this is what Israel is trying to do. But the Americans are actually terrified of Netanyahu and his <laughs> group of uh, criminal nutcases. They're terrified of this so-called government. And they are trying to keep a hold of the situation, but I don't think they're very successful at this stage. Is this war also a victim of uh, fake news? How much of uh, what we can read is real? Surprisingly, in this particular war, the amount of fake news is much less than, for example, in the Ukraine war, where, I don't know, 70-80% is fake news. Here, here, the fake news are much more limited. And that is because both parties take credit. They regard what they do as credit-worthy. They want the world to know that they are doing it. Hamas is bragging about what he did in Israel, the massacre, the atrocities. Hamas thinks it's a wonderful thing. They think it, it certifies them as the only military organization in the Palestinian world and much better alternative to Fatah. So they are bragging about it. They released streaming videos, they released uh, videos, edited videos, and so on and so forth. Similarly, Israel wants the world to know what it is doing. It wants the world to know. So here everyone is an incentive to not lie to the media. While in Ukraine and Russia, both parties have an incentive to lie to the media. So I think the amount of fake news in this war would be very limited, very small. We are living in the era of multiple uh, military conflicts. Uh, in your opinion, how will this end? This is like the 50s and the 60s, when you have two civilizations clashing and when there is one, one group of countries that are on the uh, declining and another group of countries that are on the ascendance. You have tectonic plates, it's like earthquake. So you have the tectonic plate of Russia, China, Iran. Now Iran joined BRICS, which is an economic block, which includes China and Russia at the invitation of China and Russia. Iran is the avowed enemy of the United States. So now there is this block fighting the block of the West. The block of the West is declining, has been declining for decades. And so there, everywhere where the East meets the West, we're going to have wars. Kosovo, Ukraine, Israel, and of course next, Taiwan. This is where the East meets the West. But also in surprising places, I wouldn't be shocked to see Hungary and Poland get involved in some conflict, maybe not military, but definitely a conflict between Russia and the United States. Russia has become the long arm of China. China is in charge. Russia is a long arm of China, a satellite of China. We see, for example, North Korea, which is uh, under the control of China, effectively, supplying Russia with weapons. So, uh, supplying Russia with, with weapons. So, China now indirectly is supplying Russia with weapons. So, w definitely, it's a war between East and West via proxies, via other people territories. As the Russians say, the Americans would fight Russia to the last Ukrainian. Yeah. Mr. Wagner, thank you for this interview. Thank you.